welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate, and welcome to July. For the month of July here on the podcast, we are taking a bit of a holiday, but that doesn't mean you can't listen to some of the top episodes from the archives. After all, we are nearing the end of season five. We are at 256 total episodes. We have a lot of episodes that are from years ago that I want to bring forward to you just in case you just started tuning in in the last year or maybe in the last two or three years and share with you what listeners have determined is their favorite. And so today's episode that I'm going to share with you is actually an an episode from season three. Now, some of you may know, because you follow me on Instagram or subscribe to the weekly newsletter, or even just have stopped by the blog recently, I have just been to France. And so of course, I'm thinking France right now in my brain. And so I've chosen an episode that is all about Julia Child. Now, this particular episode um, is episode 155. And I'm going to be sharing six life lessons for living well from Julia Child. The petite plaisir as well is scrumptious and delicious and from one of my favorite cookbook authors who lives in Paris and Provence and it is very simple to make. I encourage you to give it a shot and impress not only the people that you're going to share it with but impress yourself on how masterful you can be in the kitchen with this simple and helpful recipe and most importantly delicious. So for the next few weeks you're going to be finding a favorite archived episodes here on the podcast. And we're going to return when the annual, the fourth annual French week kicks off on the second week of August, which will be the 11th of August. And a brand new episode will air on the 12th of August. Now, some of you may be asking, well, why are you taking July off from the podcast, Shannon? Well, you may remember that last September I kicked off the first vodcast. So the cooking show of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. And what I'm doing in July and August is producing, taping, traveling to gather information for season two, which will kick off in September. So don't worry, I am busy at work. It's just not going to be shown until later this fall. But you can always follow along on the blog. Every Monday, there will always be a new motivational post if there is not a new podcast episode. So for the entire month of July and the first week of August, there may not be a new podcast episode, but there will be a Monday motivational post that is absolutely brand new. So I encourage you to stop by. Now let's get to the six life lessons from Julia Child of how to live well. Thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful week. Welcome to the 155th episode of The Simple Sophisticate. None other than Julia Child is our inspiration for today's episode. And we're just going to walk through some of her words and derive some life lessons from them that we can all apply to our lives, whether we enjoy cooking or not, whether we want to step into that kitchen or not, whether we love France or not. All of this is applicable no matter where or what we are trying to do, where we're trying to go, what we're trying to achieve. But before I get into that, today's petite plaisir is a sweet, simple, chocolatey treat that is intimidating initially when we look at what it is and we hear the name of it. But after having completed this recipe myself last week, I just had to say to myself, what have you waited for? Why haven't you done this sooner? This is so simple and so delicious and saves a lot of money too. Anyways, stay tuned until the end of today's episode where I'll reveal that simple, sweet, chocolatey recipe. The more I read about Julia Child, especially in her own words, the more I find inspiration regarding how to successfully journey through life. Now I have many more of her books and cookbooks to get through, but I've read quite a few uh, memoirs by her and, and biographies as well. But it was the book, My Life in France, which was recently a petit plaisir here on the podcast, episode 152, that has just been tickling my mind. I cannot seem to get it out. She writes beautifully you are taken back into this woman's time of her life when things, whether she knew it or not, were changing and changing in a powerful way for her future. And the key thing was that she was following 
her intuition. She was doing what she loved. She was living a life that she loved. She was being curious and she refused to say no to things she didn't understand. And she just kept trying to figure them out. And so it's her saying yes to life and remaining curious and refusing to be intimidated by obstacles and unknowns and not knowing how to do something that we all could probably learn something from Julia Child, whether we enjoy cooking or just eating good food. And the lessons she provides are applicable in every arena of our lives. As I mentioned, I've read and loved my life in France And I wanted to come up with a list of some of the life lessons that were unearthed about how to navigate each of our journeys successfully in Julia's own words. Today I'm sharing with you six, but I know there are far more. If the list intrigues you, I highly recommend picking up her memoir, which was published just after her death, as she herself, along with her nephew, um, had completed it just prior to her passing. So let's just dive right into this, and I'll kind of give some commentary along the way. Um, that I discovered as I was reading the book. Number one, listen to what stirs you. When a passion worth pursuing presents itself, you'll know. A quote from Julia. Now that I had started writing, I found cookbookery such fulfilling work that I intended to keep at it for years and years. And I've shared this one before, this quote before, but it was her aha that I know feeling that she did come across and she stuck with it as we know from then on. She just listened to herself. And I think that was a big takeaway for me because there weren't a lot of cookbook writers at that time. There were definitely not American cooks writing about French cooking, but something spoke to her. Something was awoken and she didn't ignore it. And I think That's the part of life that's scary, but also the key to listen and step forward without having all the answers planned out. And if Julia Child exemplifies that it is worth it, what more evidence do we need? So that's number one. Listen to what stirs you. When a passion worth pursuing presents itself, you'll know. Number two. If we choose to, we can change. Here's a quote from the book. After driving to Rouen, we stopped in for lunch at La Corion, where we ordered exactly the same meal that we'd had on my first day in France, more than two and a half years earlier. Oysters, saumonier, salade verte, fromage blanc, and café filter. Ah, me! The meal was just as sublime the second time around, only now I could identify the smells in the air quicker than Paul, order my own food without help, and truly appreciate the artistry of the kitchen. La Corion was the same, but I had become a different person. And as you read through this memoir, you do see her progress and evolve and change and you hear the excitement in her words as she's learning you also hear her frustrations and she dives into those as well and the obstacles she runs up against but she never stops she never stops she fell in love with france the moment nearly the moment she arrived aside from the fact that they were seasick when she first arrived on the land um, terra firma of france but she learns the language, she learns to cook, she gets to know the people as we know, and in time, she does change and become this person that has figured out her journey, figured out her direction. Number So that was number two. If we choose to, we can change. Number three, self-doubt is natural and a sign that you truly care about what you are trying to do. Continue to push forward. Here's another quote from Julia. Ah, me. There was still so much to learn, and cooking was only half of it. I felt I'd have to teach at least a hundred classes before I really knew what I was doing. What I love about this quote, uh, in context, she is starting her small cooking class there in Paris that you see depicted on the show Julia and Julia by Nora Ephron. And Her husband has been a teacher for 16, 17 years up until this point. He hasn't been a teacher, but in the past, he had been a teacher for about 17 years. And he's giving her advice that you have to be confident when you speak and you have to 
convey this knowledge that you have all this knowledge. And her immediate response to that was, but I know I don't know everything. And I, I, I want to make sure they know I don't know everything, but I want to learn what I don't know. And I just love that honesty about her. Obviously she acquires a lot of knowledge along the way, and this is in the early stages, but her honesty was very forthcoming. And she knew that she had a lot to learn, but she wanted to continue to learn. And it was that doubt that I think we need to harness and you see as a beacon in a way that's telling us this is something you're passionate about. You want to learn more. And because you want to learn more, you know, there's a lot you don't know, but you want to go down this journey. So self-doubt is just in many ways, the best thing to see, because it says to you, I really do want this. This is something I want to do well. And so it's not something that should stop you. It's something that should just remind you, hey, you do have more things to learn. But you know what, you're going in the right direction. You're doing something you're passionate about. Now just take the time to get to know and have patience with yourself. So that's number three, self doubt is natural. I just want to interrupt and take a quick break here to say, since I've taped that episode, which was in 2017, I had the opportunity to go to that restaurant that was spoke about spoken about in uh, point number two, La Corinne um, in Rouen, France. And I have an entire video, about a two or three minute video of my entire experience at the restaurant. Um, so I'll include that on the show notes today if you want to check it out. Before we get to the final three life lessons from Julia Child on how to live well, I have a few sponsors I'd like to introduce you to that are supporting today's episode. BetterHelp is online counseling that is there for you. Connect with your professional counselor in a safe and private online environment and get help on your own time and at your own pace. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist. With licensed professional counselors in a variety of specialty areas, such as stress, anxiety, relationships, even grief and self-esteem, you can tailor the counseling session for exactly what you're looking for. Anything you share is confidential, and if you're not happy with your counselor for any reason, you can request a new one at any time. Listeners of this podcast will receive 10% off your first month with the discount code of SIMPLE, so why not get started today? Visit betterhelp.com simple and use the promo code SIMPLE to get 10% off your first month from BetterHelp. Simply fill out a questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com simple and don't forget to use the discount code SIMPLE to receive 10% off your first month. To all my fellow gardeners out there or want to be gardeners who just cannot find the time to get a garden started, Plant Package is there for you. For people short on time, each plant package takes about 20 minutes to assemble. With Plant Package, the prep work for gardening is done for you. Plant Package selects durable, seasonable plants. An appropriate and stylish container sends you just the right amount of soil and plant food and includes instructions for assembly and plant care. Each month is tailored to that particular season. And for example, I received the May package last month and it arrived with two strawberry plants and two basil plants. Those strawberry plants are doing fantastic in my garden. I'm excited to see those strawberries ripen so that I can enjoy them. And you can choose a subscription that fits your lifestyle. You have the opportunity to choose whether your box comes monthly, every other month, or seasonally, which would be every three months. And as a simple, sophisticated listener, you have an opportunity to receive your first box for free. Simply visit plantpackage.com slash simple and choose your delivery option. Then use promo code simple at checkout to receive your first box free. Again, visit plantpackage.com slash simple. Use the promo code simple, choose your delivery option and receive your first box free. The Simple Sophisticate podcast is also sponsored by Trust and Will. Trust and Will is a state planning simplified. Trust and Will offers guardianships, wills, and trusts in all 50 states. And starting at $39 in just 10 minutes, you can have an official guardianship, will, or trust that is ready to be notarized. As a Simple Sophisticate listener, you have the opportunity to take 10% off by going to trustandwill.com or entering promo code SIMPLE at trustandwill.com. Again, receive 10% off any guardianship, will, or trust that you create at Trust and Will by simply visiting trustandwill.com slash simple or enter promo code SIMPLE at Trust and Will. Having had the opportunity to go through the questionnaire, I can attest it is fast. It is simple. Simply sit 
sit down, answer the few questions that are necessary, and you will have a downloadable PDF document that you can get notarized for either guardianships, wills, or trusts. Again, visit trustandwill.com slash simple or enter promo code simple at trust and will to take 10% off. Number four, often the first rejection is a test to determine your true desire. Quote, I sighed. It just might be that the book was unpublishable. I wasn't feeling sorry for myself. I had gotten the job done. I was proud of it. And now I had a whole batch of foolproof recipes to use. Besides, I had found myself through the arduous writing process. Even if we were never able to publish our book, I had discovered my raison d'etre in life and would continue my self-training and teaching. This was one of the first rounds. I think it was the actual first round of the publisher turning down the book because it was too large and too much for what the publishing house in America, Hufflin Mifflin, thought that an American cook would actually want to buy. But she didn't see it as a huge defeat. Yes, of course, it was defeat. And I think they portray that in the film because they can't cover every single time that they every single step of the process. But if you read the book, you see that she immediately does what she says right here. She saw all the gifts and the good stuff that came out of the process. She had, as we know, these foolproof recipes that we eventually do get to see. She had tested them ad nauseum until she knew they would work. And then she sat back and figured out what she was going to do next. It wasn't a deterrent. It was something that led her down the path, continued to lead her down the path that she wanted to follow. And that first rejection is just a way of saying, do you really want this? Because if you don't, you know, ah, you know, it's easy to go to something else. But if you do, who knows what's next? And as we know, we all know what's next for Julia Child. She has quite the success after many years, as we know, it does take many years. But I do think that life at times tries to test us. And I think Julia Child's attempts, first initial attempts at trying to get her book published um, with her two co-writers is a reminder that oftentimes that's going to happen, especially if it's something that's a little bit different, a little bit new. So that's number four. Often the first rejection is a test to determine your true desire. Number five, the key to delicious food is quality ingredients. Quote, this is the kind of food I had fallen in love with. Not trendy, souped up fantasies, just something very good to eat. It was classic French cooking where the ingredients have been carefully selected and beautifully and knowingly prepared. Or in the words of the famous gastronome, Kurnonsky, food that tastes of what it is. As we know with the French culture with at least what we've talked about here on the podcast and in many other um, books and in especially in Julia Child's tome, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. It's the ingredients that make the difference in the dish. Quality seasonal ingredients. And that's not easy, especially when we look at it through the lens of, okay, what's available now? If I I'm living in a particular part of the world. What do I, what can I cook now that's fresh? And do I have a recipe for that? And how do I do that? And what, and also involves us knowing the fundamentals of cooking, which takes time to learn. But once we have those and we have that knowledge, it is a process. It does take time. Julia Child was not someone who knew how to cook when she came to Paris. Her curiosity led her to go get the education that she was curious about and her time and tenacity in the kitchen practicing is what made her the cook she became didn't just happen overnight. She wanted to become better. And I think we don't have to spend as much time as Julia Child did because most of us are probably not going to be writing cookbooks. But we can learn so that we can have more pleasure and enjoyment in the kitchen, not only as we're making it with the no- knowing that we know how to cook, but in tasting that food and knowing it's delicious and serving delicious food. Because it doesn't always have to be uber complicated if we know the basics and we know we have quality ingredients. On that note, I want to make a quick show note here. If you've been following me on Instagram, um, over the last weekend, I was finishing up the capsule spring menu 
and it is about to come out to help you with just what we're talking about here. Um, I already created a fall capsule menu, and if you um, and I'll provide a link to it on today's show notes. But the spring capsule menu is about to come out to help you cook delicious meals throughout the week. Um, versatile menu so that you're mixing and matching different ingredients. You're not buying a ton of ingredients, but you're also utilizing what's fresh and in the season. And they're not uber difficult recipes, simple and delicious. So that's coming out in the next two weeks. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And the last life lesson from Julia Child from her book, My Life in France, is time, perseverance, and asking for help from experts does pay off. It would eventually take us two years and something like 284 pounds of flour to try out all the home-style recipes for French bread we could find. This is when she says we, she means Paul and herself. We used two French textbooks on baking and tutored ourselves on the fine points of yeasts and flours, yet our best efforts still fell short. One day I read a newspaper article about Professor Raymond Calvel, an eminent baker and teacher at l'École Française des Meneries. Professor Calvel showed us what we'd been doing wrong and taught us all about making proper French bread. By the end of the day, our loaves were turning out just right, and I was feeling euphoric. It was as though the sun in all its glory had suddenly broken through the shades of gloom. Now, this testing was for her second volume of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, of which I'll put a link on today's show notes. Because in the first, they didn't have those bread recipes, but her editor, Judith Jones, um, basically told Julia, this is a French cookbook. You need to have these recipes. People are looking for those recipes. And so Julia, as you see here, spent years and a lot of dollars and a lot of time trying to figure out how us, the home cook, could make that French bread like we would pick up in a French bakery. And I think that's been a huge takeaway for me from this book. She was not an overnight success. It didn't happen because she wanted to make it happen in the sense of, well, this will be easy. Number one, she didn't know how it was all going to turn out. She just did what she loved. I think that's the important part. But she put in the time. She perfected these recipes. She did all the grunt work and made all the mistakes for us. And so that we can trust what we're doing with her recipes. That is why it's a classic cookbook. That is why it is something that people revere. It's worthy of that. And I also think that her Willingness to seek out experts is telling because she goes to the people that know more than she does. She's not afraid to say, hey, you are wise on this. You have time and expertise. What can I learn from you? What are you willing to share with me? Are you willing to share? And if you are, tell me what you want me to do. (laughs) I think that's a great lesson, not just for learning how to make French bread, but for anything in life. Again, this is a beautiful book, and she also goes into her experience of the creation of The French Chef, which um, aired on PBS, and the making of those episodes, Um, being a pioneer in the food television industry, as we call it now. I'll provide a link to that book on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 155. And I have a few other posts I think you might enjoy as well, inspired by Julia, at least a few of them. Go inside her Provence home that she and Paul built, and you can now rent it on Airbnb for your next vacation. Did you know that? Just knowing that the key really is finding a passion for life. And it doesn't have to be something very specific, I don't think, like cookbookery. But having something you're passionate about is what is the fuel and having that endless curiosity, which she did. Those are the six life lessons from Julia Child. I do hope you enjoy. And I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. All right, welcome back. This week's Petit Plaisir is a simple, sweet chocolate treat. We're talking about dark chocolate truffles, and you can make your own. I honestly had never made dark chocolate truffles before. I have purchased a lot of them, as many of my readers and listeners know. It's one of my evening rituals to nibble on a dark um, chocolate uh, truffle with my tea in the evening when I don't eat dessert. 
but I haven't ever made my own. And I don't know why I haven't, because now that I know how simple it is, hmm, it will be happening more often. But I was inspired after going through Patricia Wells' um, new cookbook, My Master Recipes, and I pulled out her recipe and played a little bit with it, and this is what I came up with. It is a, a process that you want to plan the day before that you want to make them for dessert or for a treat or whatever, because you're going to have to let it just sit out on the counter for a few hours, preferably overnight. That's the only thing that takes time. The rest is so simple, so simple. And the key again, as we just mentioned in the episode today about Julia Child is quality ingredients. So all you do the night before is coarsely chop up the chocolate. You want seven ounces of bittersweet chocolate, at least 70% cacao. And I recommend, um, there are a handful of different brands you can check out, but I've shared my favorites on the recipe on the show notes. And you place the chocolate in a medium metal bowl. I put mine in a copper pot and just set that aside for a moment. You're going to make mix up a small little mixture to pour on that chocolate that will melt it. So in a saucepan, you want to pour cream and honey and you want about two thirds cup cream and one tablespoon honey. Heat that up on low heat until it comes just barely to a boil. And so basically you're just warming it up, making sure it's all mixed up. And then you immediately pour a third of that mixture that's of honey and cream over the chocolate in the metal bowl. And you want to work really quickly with a spatula mixing it up because you're trying to melt that chocolate right from the heat of the mixture. And so as it's beginning to gain that glossy and smooth finish, pour the rest of the cream until it all emulsifies and it's completely melted and and completely smooth. And then you add one tablespoon of unsalted butter. There's still warmth in that, that chocolate mixture and you want to use that warmth to melt that butter into the chocolate. And you mix until everything is completely incorporated and you have this lovely, glossy ganache. That's ganache. That's all it is. It's so simple. I was so excited. You can see how mine turned out in the pictures in the recipe. But you literally just set the bowl aside for a little bit to get it to room temperature. Don't put anything on it. Just set it aside. And then once it's cool and it's at room temperature, put plastic wrap over the top of it and set it aside. Don't put it in the refrigerator. Just set it aside for several hours or best bet, just do it for an entire night. That's what I did. And you'll see how it looked in the morning in the picture um, after the fifth step of instructions for making the ganache. All right. So the good news here, though, you can actually refrigerate the ganache up to two days. So if you need to do it ahead of time, you absolutely can. And then you make the balls, the truffle balls, and you want to make sure you serve them at room temperature. So you may make them right before you want to serve them because they'll be at room temperature, but maybe you're making them ahead of time and they can be saved in the refrigerator for up to one week. So either way, it works and it's a simple process. Um, so you're going to get, I like using a small um, ice cream scoop that has a lever on it that will then take the chocolate out. It's up to you. You don't have to do that. You can just get an ice cream scoop that doesn't manually take it out with a spoon and then roll it in your hands. But I was using an ice cream scoop, scoop out about a one inch amount that's going to roll into a one inch ball, roll it into your hand until it's a smooth ball. And then in a bowl with a wire sieve on top, you're going to put the truffle in the sieve and dash a little bit of unsweetened cocoa powder on top of it. You're going to use about three to five tablespoons of cocoa powder. There's a lot of ways you can do this. I found that was the first way I did it. I put the round ball in the sieve and then kind of just dusted a little bit of chocolate on it and then rolled it around. But then what I found best worked after I had some chocolate powder in the bowl that had gone through the sieve is to just roll the balls around in the bowl have it pick up the chocolate powder and then put it in the sieve to shake off any excess. And that's all you do for all of the truffle balls and you're done. So after that point, you can either serve them because they'll be at room temperature or you can put them in the refrigerator up to a week. That's it. You have dark chocolate truffles. How easy is that? I'm not trying to quote Barefoot Contessa, but it really is. But that was in the book that I highly recommend you picking up, My Master Recipes by Patricia Wells. She organizes her cookbook by skill. So she'll give you a master recipe for 
in this case, how to work with chocolate. Um, but she also does blanching and broiling and basting and roasting, all the different skills. She'll give you a master recipe and then she'll give you a few more ways to play with the recipe, which I think is fantastic. And she talks you through the skill, which is what we were just talking about when we're talking about Julia Child. She learned the skills and then she could have some fun with those skills, making different recipes that she wanted. So I think you'll enjoy it. They're delicious and you really will be completely satiated with one because of that quality chocolate. So you'll find the recipe on the show notes, the simply luxurious life.com backslash podcast 155. I hope you've enjoyed this week's petit plaisir where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the Simply Luxurious Life, Dot com, or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcasts, blog posts, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's weekly newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee, just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bon genie.